Today on Zero Daily Done, I'm going to be doing the steps to diagnose what's wrong with the lasers that got sent to me. There's a total of six lasers. This one right here is one out of two light space color rays. It's an 8 watt laser. Uh, it didn't get sent with a cover on it. So let's see what's wrong with the inside of this. I'm also using two cameras now. So I'll be able to flip back and forth between the close view and the not close view. So, yeah. We'll try that, and that won't be until later on when I get into the more delicate little bits inside of these. But, yeah, well, let's see, the laser driver, it's kind of like warped. Oh, that's not very clean. Let's see, laser driver, yeah, that goes to the laser head. It's not mounted down completely. And, uh, let's see. That's not mounted down at all. Where does that mount to? Okay, I see where those screw holes are now. Hmm. Let's see, so these, that, and that at least needs to be mounted down. It looks like here, that's, uh, I don't know why the live is a cut. It's interesting. Oh, let's see what else is going on with this. Galvo power supply seems to be in. Pull that up here. And, uh, you move over to here. Yeah, there you go. I can see it on the other camera. Yeah, all of these are disconnected. That must have been from where they... I wonder if this is a good power supply at all. Yeah. Hmm. Well, while we're here, give it a flip around. Let's see uh, what's inside the laser head over here and uh, this area. So, uh, flip this side panel out. And uh, here are the four mounts for aligning. So, got the one which I suspect is for the green. This one looks like it's to be for the blue and the red. That's pretty typical. Let's uh, get a gander and see what's inside of that laser head. I'll flip this up. Well, that's awfully loose. Somebody's been in here before. Uh, probably for aligning purposes. I have pinched myself. First battle wound of the day. Yeah, well, not as many as I thought. Let's see. Yeah, that has to be green direct diode, blue direct diode. So probably like uh, what one to two watt, two watt diodes. And that's an interesting arrangement. Oh yeah, it's just uh, just two reds. I wonder what reds they're using. Interesting. Excellent beam correction. So on these you can see the uh, anamorphic prism pair. And uh, these two prisms 
a correct the beam output. You can also like get correction lenses, and uh, here I'm assuming they're using one of the 650 high output laser diodes and a polarized beam splitting cube. So pretty straightforward assembly. Put the cover back on carefully. So we'll go through and check out those alignments later on when we get these units all put back together and powered up. So firstly, if not for major order of business on this laser, definitely reconnecting the power supplies. Checking out if they're good. Checking uh, the galvos, galvo drivers, and uh, seeing if we get full power out of the laser head and see what the balance is like if we get that far. But this one looks fairly straightforward. About the only thing to really worry about is uh, the galvos. It looks like everything else is going to be in fine working order. I'm going to have to find a couple of more screws to test out this laser power supply as well. Right, well, that one seems very straightforward. Check out the other ones. Very naughty. Very naughty. Oh, let's see what the repair label says. This laser is damaged. We took some scanners from this laser. They are probably bad. Uh, so you either took them or they're bad. Which one is it? Almost everything inside has been minorly damaged with two steel parts. Okay. Could work if tinkered with long enough. Okay, if it's missing parts, you can't just tinker with it. Red diode might be out. Okay. Out or not? Uh. Scanners seem to be there. Okay. Uh, rubber feet. Missing rubber feet. Uh, yeah, let's open this one up. See what the damage is. Oh, that's just a lot of fun. Get those uh, feet. One of those feet are missing on the bottom. I'm gonna need to put something of the appropriate size underneath that. And get driven bonkers. Oh, that's close enough. It's not banging on the glass. Yeah, this is the second light space unit, the color rate 8 watt, the reason why I knew what the first one was, is this one has the cover on it, which is nice, probably move the other camera out of the way, that's all, alright, let's see how badly things are on the inside, oh dear, alright, well, uh, let's see. That's good. The back laser mounts are not where they need to be. That mirror probably needs to be realigned. Looks like the laser block needs to be set back. Oh, wires are not connected. Are these both loose? 
Oh dear. Well, this is kind of like a, a laser erector set at this point. Okay, so, yeah, it looks like everything's been pretty much tinkered with. Ah, the scanners are still here, though. They look like they're all, oh, yeah, no, this one's loose. Alright, so here's that Galvo. Looks to be, have you that PTA 40, so 40 kpps Galvo. Nice little Galvo, looks like it has the, uh, the same as the Cambridge or the Gold Star. So probably the same bow tie with the four sensor plates on the bottom uh, it moves nice and freely I'll probably be able to uh, wire this up to one of the Galvo drivers the Galvo drivers that I have three coils so I'm betting okay yeah these are joined together Let me get a better focus on that all right perfect so yeah these coils are joined together here and then got uh, the two inputs of the coils connected to these two pins common ground photo diode one and photo diode two uh, the series change and the IR LED pretty straightforward on that gonna need another mirror as well looks like that's the laser driver is unplugged and unmounted uh, looks like here are the analog inputs. I'm betting they go just in a nice little roll like that. Uh, red, white, and black. Not exactly the standard colors I would use to label that. And, uh, yeah, it looks like all the mains power. Uh, I wonder what the, those go to down there. Probably the fan. Uh, yeah, it looks like all the mains power is uh, disconnected up. Doesn't look like anything is cut. Ah, that's a little concerning. I wonder what that's on there for. Oh, other plugs here. Uh, power con connector, fuse port still there. Yeah, let's see if I can pull that one wire out. Let's see if it's a red wire. I can't really get to it. Oh, it seems stuck on something. Got this black wire. It's got to be fans. Fans located on the bottom and sides. Yep, so those fan wires are probably tangled up too. Alright, well, looks like it's going to need a pair of Galvo amps at least. We're going to have to track down where the shutter goes and compare it with the other uh, light space color ray unit. Uh, see what drives the shutter here. It's just basically a uh, yeah, the shutter here. Let's see. All right, move this out of the way. So in the addition of the X and the Y Galvos here, there's also this piece, and uh, these are shutters. They're mechanical shutters, and uh, they'll either be closed to, to block the beam from hitting the galvos and going out and then when you have the uh, the laser enabled the shutter will go sideways and the beam will then be allowed to travel past the top of the shutter here the shutter window uh, and then out once reflected off the two galvos so it uh, looks like there's going to be a lot of things going on with this one uh, in addition to that this key interlock needs to be Resoldered at least, but it does look like the lock itself is in okay shape. Fuse holder is missing a cover. That's about it, though. Other than uh, really missing those two Galvo amps and uh, the unknown condition of those Galvos, it looks like it's pretty salvageable. Uh, it's gonna need another Galvo mirror in there as well. Oh, uh, it's pluck these back in the case for now get up out of there oh. oh okay that's for jumpering the power the 12 volts 
from this supply, I believe, to the RGB laser diode driver. Nice little compact units. Alright, well now that we've taken a look at that, I'm going to pop the screws back on and go back, get some more lasers to take a look at. Here we have the Laser Energy Micro RGB. It's anything but micro. Uh, I mean, it's small for the output, 18 watts max. So that's going to be interesting. Label says, does nothing. Let's find out. We're gonna need to knock some things over on the workbench and get the house the laptop. Alrighty. Excellent. Oh uh, now we got a quick show. Run it. Gonna plug this in. See what she does. Look, where's my Ilda? Awesome. Power. I know there's a cord for that somewhere. Probably many of them. Yeah. You use beige cables. Nobody steals them. Those black cables everybody are, are after. Alright. Come on, the peepers. Ease. Let's hope nothing is detached in here. I don't want a live laser case. Contact. Uh, yeah. It has fan noise. Well, this fan in the back doesn't seem to be spinning at all. Got the hour counter going. See if we can get anything as far as an animation or anything going out of this one. Oh, oh, oh. Brightness thirty percent and label laser. Nothing. Oh. Even getting any galvo movement on that laser at all. I'm not seeing anything in here. Oh. Well. Does nothing indeed. I want to know if that other power supply does spin that power, or spin that fan up or not. Maybe it is a dead power supply. Well, let's find out. Let's grab another one. We've got three of these. A few things to note now. Got some more information. The two lasers that I took a look at before, the two little light space units, are actually 1.8 watts, not 8 watts or 10 watts, like they say on the modules and stuff. Uh, these lasers, not 16 watts, uh, they're about 6 to 7 watts, and they're made by Citadini. They're not 
laser energy, just certified and stuff by laser energy. So let's check this one out, see what's wrong with it. Plug it in. It says no green, scanners toast. This one some this one ate some scanners. Give a little laser power. Let's figure out what's going on with this one. Okay, turn on the laser. Okay, it's doing something. Set the uh, laser for low brightness output on the eyes. On. All right. Let's get something going. See if there's any output at all. Enable laser. Huh. I don't want to put my hand in front of that, do I? Raising the brightness. So, oh. getting something. Getting just a dot, though. Let's see. Get some white in there. Let's see what white looks like. Oh, that's right, right. Right, pink indeed. Hmm. Is that a chord problem? Does that look to be like a chord problem? Nothing from the galvos. Now they're not even moving at all. Uh, let's go right to green. If it happens. No output on the green indeed. Alright, well. This label looks like it's pretty good. So uh, turn it off. See what's inside. Well, uh, also get you guys closer to the inside of the laser once it's open oh first things first turn off the laser we're gonna be working with it uh, bench handle these are heavy lasers so I got the uh, extra piece of glass underneath everything. I the glass underneath so my desk doesn't break. Yeah, heavy lasers. Okay. And opening up the front cover. Uh, it looks like it's gonna need glass that hooks up to there. Uh, wires, mystery wires. Hmm, brown and yellow. Guessing those go together. Let's get you guys a little closer to the action. All right. So as I said, it looks like we get these cables. One of those may go over to here. Not sure where the other one goes to. That's not right. Oh, be still, my son. Okay, well, that's not right. The galvos aren't plugged in. That explains a lot.
Are those the, the inputs? Those might be the Galvo signal inputs. Uh, let's see, I'm assuming I dotted for negative and X and assuming that's for Y. Cool. Well, let's see what uh, we get. See if we're even uh, getting a homing signal. So I'll plug those galvos in. Oh boy, oh boy. Ah, uh, right, well, as long as uh, I should be good as long as I don't cut the red wire, right? These wires, it looks like to be 15 volt out from the Galvo drivers. And. Slide that in. Oh, the shutter's taped down. Oh, that's interesting. First try. Okay, well, if we fire this up, these should move. Once again, uh, laser is off. Trusting my eyeballs to the miracles of man. Ah, it's an interlock too. Excellent. Nothing. Okay, well, they should be at least finding a home position. They're getting no signal. At all. Are, okay, are the, are the coils open? Let's find out if the coils are open. Now, uh, the galvos usually register anywhere in uh, continuity between about 3 ohms and about 6 ohms. So, that's what we should be getting. And uh, since they're hooked up to the driver, if we get any problems with the driver, uh, it'll show up as a short. So let's see what we get. Across those Galvo input coils. 3.7 on the Y. And let's see if this guy matches. 3.6. Okay, well that's good. Doesn't look like the coils are bad. Uh, let's see if you're getting power to the Galvo drivers. Alright, so the Galvos, in this case, look like they're going to take a plus, minus, uh, 24 volt power supply. So, assuming that that is the input for the power, looks like it. Uh, yeah. Assuming so, uh, we should be getting out. So let's check and see if we get power input. Uh -huh. Oh, that's not healthy. Point zero seven ish on there. Flip it around and check the other side, see if we're getting any power that way. Nothing, we're getting a nothing on those. Okay, well, it sure as heck looks like that Galvo power supply. So let's check out that green while we're here in the neighborhood. B 
green block. That'll do. Alright, and we're gonna have to interrupt the interlock up here. And now uh, make sure the brightness is set down. Interlock defeating tool of science. It's got to be this, maybe. Nope. Mm hmm. Good interlocks when you can't defeat them. See if that'll hold it. Looks good. Switch on. And uh, let's go back to white. Bring up the brightness on that. I see. Interesting. Huh. That looks like the gobos aren't kicking in correctly. For sure. Maybe it's not a dead power supply, but it seems to be a very iffy power supply. I'm not liking that. I definitely want to test that on a healthy power supply. And they get in there. See what the problem is with the green. I think I'm going to turn it off for the time being. And uh, see what's wrong with the other one. Get this laser put back together. And go from there. Check out that power supply. I'm betting uh, that the power supply got damaged and then took out something. It does look like the Gelbo amps are good. Uh, I don't know if the Gelbos are good though. i uh very uh, suspicious of that power supply though. Get in there. Make sure that that cable is good. Here's the last City Genie laser to work on. Let's see. Green is out. Blue is dim and fat. Okay, so it might be the same electrical problem as we saw on the other green laser. Uh, blue, dim, dying fat. That could be either focusing problems or it could be bad diodes, catastrophic optical damage. Red dichromere always comes out of alignment. It's been doing this for years. Okay, well, that sounds like a mechanical problem as well with uh, dichros. So the other two City Genie lasers were marked as the 6 to 7 watts this one on the back is labeled 18 watts so let's see if there's any uh, differences on the inside later on well, let's uh see what she does when you get her turned on uh power make sure there's no reflective objects behind me uh pretty safe as long as i'm being careful with the peepers on this one hey okay. Oh, let's turn on the brightness on quick show. I see what analog lasers and turn on the laser. Red flashing light on the deck. That's on. It's a uh, safety system. Mess around with that. Nothing. There we go. Well, you know what? You know, that looks like it has some green to me. At least the gallows are good. They look like they're, they're a little high, though. Check your settings. Yeah, that should be much, much more centered than it is. 
that's really scanning high. I want that galbo ship down a little bit more. Well, that does look like a green. Let's get a white in there. See what she does. I'm going to make those laser beams thinner. Uh, bring up the brightness a little bit too. I'm going to move that all out of the way. Limit the amount of reflection I'm getting off my uh, tripod there. Don't want any reflection on the eyeballs. Start brightness with the Cones, take like a cone, a nice stable cone, nice white cone, turn up the brightness. Uh, the blue could be better. And the red dichro is out of the way. Oh, what, where did the green go now? What the devil? Yeah, the green was working just a second ago and it wasn't it. And then where did it go? Beans? Uh, red beans. Yeah, where did, uh, where did the green go? Disappeared on us. Interesting. Definitely seems like a laser head problem. Uh, it's not a cable problem that I can see. Interesting. Let me see how I get that same flashy green when I turn it off real quick. I did before. Nope. Typical problem with the green GPSS laser heads like this. It's because a pump diode uses so much current that uh, the control systems don't handle it quite as well. Uh, large GPSS laser heads are notorious for that kind of stuff. Oh, this interlock delay is going to drive me bonkers. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder where that green went. It was there. Oh, that red is very unhealthy. Everything about this laser bothers me. Especially since it's supposed to be a lot of watts. Woof indeed. I don't even feel that. That's as bright as it can go. Terrible. My hand should be getting cancer by this point. Mmm. Yeah. Okay, well. Oh. Some love for you and it will be. Pop this open and see what is inside. That's yeah, familiar. Hey, this one's marked Azul. That's blue. I know what that means. Well, these are definitely laser drivers then. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Ground, 
Voltage M. M for modulation. Duh. Ding. Okay, well, it looks like we're going to have to get inside of this a little bit too, maybe see what the focus problem is. And it looks like there might be a mechanical problem with this die crow. It doesn't look like it's been adjusted, so I'm assuming maybe this has been a little wear and tear, and maybe the ball wasn't exactly formed uh, round that it got out of place. Seems to be fairly mounted down, uh, and the springs look fine the way that these guys are made. Kind of hard to kick them out of alignment. So, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna pop this open. I think in the uh, in the video, the next video is coming up. So yeah, this one works. Nice galvos, very nice, very small galvos. Beefy um, rotor assemblies. Very nice. Why is this galvo flipped around backwards? <laughs> Weird. Really goofy. I've never seen a gavel put around backwards like that. Dang it, not operating. Um. Um. Right against zero, that didn't help things. Well, yeah, it flips around forwards. Weird. So do the gallows power off when that's off? Yes, they do. Okay. I get you now. That was helpful information for later diagnosis. This is, uh, when I saw the power supply and it didn't seem to be booting up, it looks like that's tied to the interlock. The galvos don't get any power at all when the laser uh, key is off. So, one of these could be bad. I gotta check it out, but the resistance on those seem to be pretty good. And I can check these out simply by uh, swapping the galvos around, seeing if it's a bad galvo or not. But that was useful information to know on my part. But yeah, it looks like you're the same 6 watt laser. Uh, it's probably gonna be like a 2 watt DPSS and uh, uh, 3 watts of the red and two watts of the blue, three watts of the blue ish. So this is gonna be where all those blue and red lasers are going to be. Before I move on to the next laser, I said I was gonna open this. Let's go ahead and open this. Here's that laser head with the blue and the red. So first I'm gonna undo, I've already undone a couple of the ones in the front. I'm gonna take off the top screws. And these two I believe are longer. So I think these are gonna go all the way down and. This is what holds the drivers for the red and the blue lasers, it looks like. And uh, hopefully on the inside, oh yeah, that's a nice long screw. These are coming out a little too easy, too. I think somebody's been in this laser head before for service as well. Is that years of touring I've gotten to them. Okay. Oh yeah, here's that green DPSS laser head. I'm going to move this out of the way. Very carefully. Kind of let that hang there. Let that DPSS. Extra heat sink hidden. Needed. Extra heat sink needed. Well, okay. That's a big pump out in there. Is that about 2 watts? Probably talking about a... Let's see... 20 watt pump diode? 10, 15... More than 10, 15 for DPSS. A little aluminum spacer. Cute. I want to move that over here, actually. I don't want that hanging. That's not helpful, either. Let me see if I can set it on this. Yeah, that'll work. That'll do. That'll do. Lasers come with built-in tools these days. Check that out. Alright, let's take over to here. Shorter screws, or yeah guys, the same length. Well, all the same length. Interesting.
seems like the green laser is instantly either on or off, leading me to suspect that it is indeed uh, a power supply or control related feedback. They're kind of weird, as I said, it has to do with the current that's controlling them. It sounds like the more laser power you're trying to control, the harder it is. Two more, hopefully. Let's see what we're dealing with. little obstructing wires and I'll lift completely and vertically up very carefully and here we are so there's a lot of knife edge arrangements it looks like so let me show you what's going on on the inside of here we'll get real close up to all of that okay let's take a look at the inside of the red and blue laser head and it's actually pretty easy to uh, understand once you understand a little bit what's going on. So uh, these two right here are the blue lasers. That's it. Two blue lasers and they're in a knife edge arrangement with the two anamorphic prisms or the corrective optics. So we can take a look at this whole assembly. So it goes, shoots out, goes through here and this one meets up and they're right next to one another. So the two beams are kind of chilling like that right next to one another very close and they appear to be one beam but then you got over here all of this so right here and right here and all of these are actually for red so we've got 12 red laser diodes in here you might be thinking okay why do you need 12 red laser diodes seems like a lot of laser diodes yes it is now in applications like this if you want a very tight beam it's very much preferred to use low powered what's often uh, referred to as ring single mold instead of multi mold laser diodes they have a much nicer form factor and the beam is a lot thinner so the beams don't spread out nearly as much when they're traveling so you gotta think about it like if you uh, put a whole bunch of really thin beams together uh, they'll remain thin and uh, equally as bright but if you have a really bright laser it's gonna want to spread out a lot and so overall the distance um, that these shoot over you really want that beam tightness let's take a look at it from the side so you can understand a little bit of what's going on at one of these blocks and looking at the laser block you'll notice that these three right here are a lot higher about a millimeter and a half two millimeters higher than these three over here so you've got these little adjustable mirror mounts and if you were to think about how they lay it out they lay three beams on the top and then over here they lay three beams on the bottom so you gotta think of on this side six beams that are stacked together um, drawn in a uh, area of kinda looks like you know three well, one two three so if this was your beam uh, one two three and then on the bottom one two three so that's what one of these would look like on the other side uh, where they have the other six lasers they do the same thing they make another six beams they join up in the same uh, area where the optical uh, paths meet. Let's take a look at the other side real quick. Here on the other side, uh, the side with the blue lasers, uh, it's the same thing. So you've got six more laser diodes, once again three more on the top and three more on the bottom. Now, these get combined with the other six to put 12 lasers in one beam. 
So first it has to be bounced off a mirror. That mirror is this mirror located right here. And this mirror takes the red from these six lasers and bounces it off and through this optic right here. Now this is a quarter wave polarization uh, rotator. So this takes the rotation, the optical uh, polarization, and it rotates it uh, by 90 degrees. So that way it can be mixed into the polarization cube on the same axis. Take a look over here. And here's that polarization cube. So here I have a 650 nanometer laser pointer. And you'll see that if I take it like this, I can control whether the light gets uh, sent downwards or passed through. So, see if I can. Yeah, it's kind of a little, little weird to do on here. I can show you on another one in a later video, but it either gets passed through or it gets bounced, bounced downwards. The the optic here basically ensures that the polarization suits in such a way that the laser light will end up bouncing off this and being reflected down where the other six lasers here will end up going directly through the polarization cube and out the front of the laser head. And uh, you can see here each one of these individual mirror mounts also have their adjustments for the axes uh, to perfectly align them. So yeah, it looks intimidating. It's a lot of small stuff coming together to make a really big beam. But yes, 12 lasers coming together to form one laser beam through a uh, mixture of uh, the uh, knife edge arrangements and the beam spinning polarized cube. I'm going to get this laser back together and we'll move on to the last one, really simple one. The last laser here, but not least laser. Let's see what it says. Once walking fine, I rented it to customer. They could not get it to work. Had broken pin. Pew! Tried to solder new 25 pin. Could not succeed. Has EMS 8000 scanners. EMS. How's that magic, isn't it? Uh, would like to get this wonking. You'll get this wonking. Eventually, you shall wonk. Alright, uh, let's see. That would be the uh, LDA. More or less appropriately shunned ILDA. And the back. Oh, yeah. Wow, more than 25 pins removed. Let's see here. Here's where the DB25 for the ILDA goes. Looks like we've got some torn pads here. Oh, yeah, this pads are gone. One pad here, one pad here. That pad's gone. Check the other side. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can't really see it. There's four other turns pads. One, two, three, four, all in a row. Those pads are gone. Well, that'll take the wonk right out now, won't it? Let's see what's inside this laser. Uh, two thumb screws like Gold Star and a few other lasers holding on the back bracket. And the cover should slide right off. I have taped that bracket on. Huh, making my job harder. Well, that's like opening a double wrapped gift on Christmas. That's a nice laser head though. Well, I think when I get to the prepare video on this laser, I'll probably end up opening this laser head up. Yeah, those are really nice scanners too. I, I nice I manage scanners. We'll get a closer look on those Galvos the scan kits as well. So this is a straightforward repair new DB25 connector, maybe having to jump a bunch of wires to get it to run, but nothing that should be too complicated. Um, the two light space units, all I have to do is basically make sure that those laser units are working and aligned. So that should be pretty easy. The customer is going to be putting in its own new galvos and stuff. I will see if I get one of those galvo kits running properly out of the two that he sent me. The city knee lasers have various problems. Uh, it looks to be mostly with the green. And uh, from there, it's leading me to believe that it could be actually a relay problem with the interlock system. The one seems to show a little bit of green when powering off. 
and uh, the other one is intermittent with the interlock being flipped on and off so that's uh, where I'm going with that one we'll go check all that out in the next videos coming up in this little mini series uh, I think that's about all obviously you're gonna see more of what's inside of these lasers get a little bit more information on how these work and how other lasers work so stay tuned for more